Hey guys, welcome back to the tutorial on understanding agile, a common sense approach. Get ready to learn about some selected important practices from extreme programming. We have already discussed in detail about building blocks of agile system. The continuous value delivery in agile is upheld by four pillars, self-organized people, self-adaptive processes, tools and infrastructure which facilitate productivity and now it is the time to discuss about how to facilitate flexible, robust and maintainable software design with extreme programming. Extreme programming or in short XP is a type of agile methodology which focuses primarily on the engineering aspect of the software. Tell me if you have experienced something similar. You spent hours together to find error in your code and then your colleague walks in and spots the error in no time. Everyone in software has paired at one time or another when we stuck on something. Talking it out and verbalizing our thought process is where the magic happens. You might have noticed newer ideas coming on the table while discussing a problem with your team. That's because we engage different part of our brain capabilities during discussion. So XP says, if code review is good, we will review code all the time. And the practice is called pair programming. The pair programming is like driver and navigator teamed up together in a racing car. Two programmers can sit together while one is coding, another one can review. They switch the roles intermittently. If testers know coding, then they can take up the role of reviewer and unit test case writer with their constructively destructive capabilities. Make your choice. Which code will be faster and cleaner? A module or a class with just enough code required or module or class with lot of futuristic code? Yes, the answer is A. Many times, the developers try to write the code expecting various futuristic requirements which may or may not happen and they end up writing a lot of unwanted code. Since the code is not a part of present requirement yet, they skip the proper documentation. And most of the times, before the requirements changes, these guys end up changing the organization or the project. Now the new guy comes in, doesn't understand what this piece of code does and hence won't touch it and the dead code keeps lying there for ages. So now next question is how to avoid this unwanted code and not to miss any aspect of the low level design in the unit testing. XP suggests test driven development TDD. Please watch the detailed video on agile testing and TDD. The philosophy here is if testing is good everybody will test all the time. Make your choice. Which code is more readable and maintainable? One unit doing one functionality at a time or one unit doing multiple functionalities? Obviously, option A. Now fill in the blank. Discipline technique for restructuring an existing body of code, altering its internal structure without changing the external behavior is known as. And the answer is refactoring. Let us understand the significance of refactoring with an example of simple login functionality on a web page. On click of the login button, the credentials are sent to the web server as a key value pair. The server then verifies it against the database record. Now let us have a closer look at the server side code. This is a simplified pseudo code for validating user credentials. In the first step, Extract the received user ID and password from the server request object. Next, establish the database connection. Fire the SQL query to retrieve the database password for the given user ID. Compare the database password with the one sent by the user. If they match, the user is valid and display the home page. Otherwise, redirect the user to the login page with error message. Now tell me, does this code need refactoring? Pause and give it a try. These statements carry out the web interface and flow control. These statements perform data access and transaction with database. While this part takes care of the business rule, the actual logic for validation. So let us refactor the code by moving these blocks of statement to their independent modules. 
let us call the web interface and flow control module as login controller. All the non-module functionalities can be abstracted out to other module. The login business object module is responsible for business rule. The database transaction logic is abstracted out. The module that carries out data access and transaction is login DAO. DAO meaning data access object. Now let us understand the layered architecture created by this arrangement. The first two layers together are called presentation layers. Then business layer followed by data access layer which interacts with external data source. It can also be viewed as model view and controller architecture where model is formed by clubbing BO and DAO together. Can you guess how this architecture can help in gaining agility? meaning quick adoption to the changes in requirement. Imagine what will happen if the product owner wants to change the data source to say XML or a remote web service instead of database. In this architecture, if that happens, then only data access object will need to be modified. The other layers remain unchanged. If the product owner asks for multilingual support or multi-device support, then only the presentation layer will get affected. Changes in business rule, for example, change in password encryption algorithm will affect only business layer, rest everything remains untouched. Now imagine had it been the case where all three layers were together under one single method as shown before refactoring, then any change in one part would affect the development and testing time drastically, thereby slowing down the agility and reducing overall maintainability of the software. The first five steps we discuss under TDD development cycle ends in passing the unit test cases, however, may leave the code messy. Hence, the sixth step, refactor, is needed every time. In other words, it must be part of developer's daily business. In the next video, I will discuss about two more important practices, emergent design and continuous integration. Thank you for watching. Please leave your feedback comments. You may subscribe the channel for future updates.